From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland in the Sinclair Lewis story, Dodsworth. Lux presents Hollywood. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is your program. For the Lux Radio Theater is made possible by your purchases of our products. Starring tonight on our stage on Hollywood Boulevard are Walter Houston, his wife Nan Sunderland, Barbara O'Neill, Pedro de Cordova, and Barbara Kent. As special guest, Mr. Arthur M. Levy, head of styles and wardrobe at 20th Century Fox Studios. Louis Silvers conducts our orchestra, while our entire production is under the personal direction of that celebrated pioneer of motion pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. After 35 years behind footlights, Walter Houston's idea of happiness is to do one play a year, one picture a year, and two broadcasts in the Lux Radio Theater. The rest of his time he spent at his home in the San Bernardino Mountains, a hundred miles from Hollywood, where your prestige is gauged by the amount of wood you can chop. It's typical of Walter that he enjoys this brand of happiness. He once said, if I were a different type of man, I'd undoubtedly be tempted by the money to be made doing several pictures a year. I'd get rich and very miserable. It would keep me from the stage. It would keep me from the mountains. And I'd be playing parts I probably wouldn't like. Sooner or later, he says, we're going to discover that money is the most overrated thing on earth and honest work the most belittled. The practice of that philosophy has made Walter one of our most sincere and competent artists. As Dodsworth, in Sinclair Lewis' distinguished story, he returns with Nan Sunderland, Mrs. Houston, to enact for us again one of the most memorable performances ever given on our stage. Our delight in hearing Miss Sunderland is one which theater audiences will soon share when she appears on Broadway in a new play. She's heard tonight as Fran. Also high on our star-studded cast... Uh, Barbara O'Neill as Edith Cortwright, Barbara Kent as Emily Dodsworth, and Pedro de Cordoba as Arnold Israel. And here's our play, the Lux Radio Theater production of Dodsworth, starring Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland. Our scene is the comfortably furnished library of the Dodsworth home in Zenith. It's late afternoon, and Fran Dodsworth, smartly dressed for traveling, sits beside the fire, checking over a list of things to be done before her departure. Mary, the maid, listens attentively. Let me see now, Mary. Wasn't there something else? Oh, yes, those books on the table. Mr. Dodds was taking them along. See if you can't slip them into his big leather suitcase. Yes, Mrs. Dodsworth. And send all the old magazines to the Salvation Army. Yes, Mrs. Dodsworth. And when my daughter and Miss McKee get back from their honeymoon, I put all the wedding presents that came after they left in the closet of Miss Emily's old room. I'll tell her, ma'am. Oh, Sam, how are you, dear? That's all, Mary. Yes, Mrs. Dodsworth. Well... Is everything settled, Sam? Yes, it's all over. The Revelation Motor Company, Samuel Dodsworth, president and founder, became the property of United Motors a little over an hour ago. How do you feel? Well, how would any man feel who just sold 25 years of his life? I suppose you feel kind of lost. Well, I knew what I was doing when I sold, Fran. I know what I'm after from now on. You mustn't feel lost, though. I mean, that will wear off. Life isn't going to be empty from now on. It's going to be fuller than ever and richer for both of us, Sam. Think, darling, you're free. After 20 years of doing what was expected of you, we're free. Yes, I suppose so. Don't look so mournful about it, darling. It all seems so exciting to me. Yeah, but I'm just as keen on this trip as you are, Fran. I'm raring to go. I've always wanted to see London and Paris. Oh, but I want much more than a trip out of this, Sam. I want a new life all over from the beginning. A perfectly glorious, free, adventurous life. Well, what's to prevent? Nothing if we start off on a free foot. Why, I'd... Uh, I'd almost sell this house so we wouldn't have anything to tie us down. Oh, good Lord, Fran, it's our home. We built ourselves into it. What I want is to get us some new selves now. Me? Yes, you. Why, if we weren't tied to this deadly, half-baked, middle-western town... Now, Fran, now, don't start knocking Zenith. 
I can be free enough without going back on my hometown. I'm thinking of my freedom, too. In Europe, a woman of my age is just getting to where men take a serious interest in her. And I just won't be put on the shelf by my daughter when I can still dance better and longer than she can. I've got brains, and thank heaven, I've still got looks. And no one ever takes me for more than 35, or 30 even. I'm begging for life, Sam. No, I'm not. I'm demanding it. Well, I see how you feel. All right, I'll enjoy life now if it kills me, and it probably will. We've earned this trip, Sam. It's coming to both of us. You've got plenty to show for all your work. We've brought up Emily and seen her married. And I've done my part, Sam. It hasn't always been easy. And it will, dear, from now on. Oh, Sam, I love you ever so much more when you're not just an old horse in a treadmill. I'll try you, bloody European traveler. Oh, hello, Tubby. Hello, matey. Oh, Hollywood dear. Francais, Frenzy Dites, got his spaghetti. Oh, stop being funny, Tubby. <laughs> oh, let him alone, matey. He's just glad to see us go. Sure. How are you, Fran? All right. Let me take your things, matey. Oh, thanks. We weren't satisfied just to come to the station with everyone else, Sam. Hmm? We're going to New York with you. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. That's right. Me and the wife's going to see you off the pier. Toot, toot. All ashore. Goodbye. <laughs> Say, that's great, isn't it, Fran? Mm. Huh? Yes. I'll run up and get close the bag. But, Fran, Tubby and Matey came to see you, too. I don't belong. Well, can't I help you? Go ahead, Matey. Oh, let me come along, Fran. I won't be in the way. Well, Tubby, old son of a gun, how about a cocktail? No, thanks. What's wrong with you? I think I'll stay sober until after I've given you a hunk of my mind. Yeah, what have I done? You know darn well what you've done. Americans like you and me can't quit work, Sam. We've meant to keep on working till we die in harness. Tubby, I'm out to make a new life for myself. Hmm. I'm out to learn how to enjoy my leisure now I've retired. <laughs> I've been doing things that people expected of me always. Oh, shut up. If you think I can see my oldest and closest friend turned into an expatriate parlor snake because Zenith isn't good enough for his wife. Easy now, easy, Tubby. Ever since college, I've guessed you and looked up to you. You're pretty near everything I'm not and ought to be. But you're a blamed fool when it comes to your wife. Yeah, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you trying to do, Tubby? Make Sam buy back the company? No, I wasn't. But uh, Sam's going to regret this the end of his life. He knows it as well as I do. No, I don't, Tubby. I don't know anything of the kind. All I know is that I'm out to see some of the world I haven't seen and get a perspective on the USA. <laughs> I might get to know myself at the same time. I might even get to know my wife. Fran, did I remember to tell you today that I adore you? Major Locker. Oh, here you are. I've been looking for you, Fran. Have you? Wasn't the captain's dinner delightful? It done up quite well, I thought. Uh, where's your husband? I left him out on the deck to cool off. The fresh air won't hurt him. <laughs> he thinks he sees a lighthouse or something. Sorry it's over, Fran. Sorry, what's over? The voyage. No. Oh, not that I've been bored. You've taken excellent care of that, Major Locker. If it hadn't been for meeting you Britishers, though... Sam says he can't wait to set foot on British soil. Well, neither can I. But when I do set foot... You'll try your wings. That's very pretty, Major. I hope I don't fall. I've been laying out things for us to do in London. For us to do? Why not? Fran! Fran! Fran, it, it was land! Oh, was it, Sammy dear? Bishop's Light, they call it. Say, I could get ashore in half an hour if I had a motorboat. I can't believe we've done it. Ashore in England. If you keep on across the ocean in a straight line, Sammy, you're bound to strike land sooner or later. I know, but England. That's the most natural part of it, Dodsworth. If it were Africa now, where England was. Well, my, my first sight of England isn't funny to me. Come on, Fran. Come on and look at the light, huh? Come I suppose on. we'll have to. Coming, Major? Well, it is my native land. There. There you are. See it, Fran? Look, Bishop's Light. Yes, sir. Uh... Sam, I'm cold. Let's go in. You know, I could get ashore in half an hour if I had a fast motorboat. But... I'd rather die. Coming, Major Locker? All right, you two go along. I'll, I'll join you after I've calmed down. <sighs> mm. Mr. Dodsworth? 
Oh, hello, Mrs. Courtright. What was it you just called that light? I saw it, too. Bishop's light. Of course, I've never been across before. <laughs> I, I got excited. Oh, well, there's nothing like a first trip to Europe. Yeah, especially when you're old enough to know what you're after. What are you after? Well, I'm enjoying the leisure. You see, I've been doing things myself for a long time now. I, I thought I'd give things a chance to do something to me. Oh, the education of an American. Yes, you might call it that. <laughs> How long have you given yourself? Six months. Oh, I, I'll be homesick by then. Yes. I was homesick the first year I came over. Came over? Where from? Michigan. Oh, are you an American, Mrs. Courtright? I don't know what I am. I used to be a British subject by marriage. I don't know that one can be a British subject by divorce. I expect I'm just a woman who lives in Italy. Italy? Why? It's cheap. Oh. Say, what's it like? Well, now, that depends on what one's after, as you'd say. Well, when a man has no more job and... And his wife wants a fling, there are worse things than travel. Much worse. Yeah, but for a steady thing, give me America. For Americans, that is. Your wife wouldn't say that. She will by the time our six months are up. I hope she does. Drifting isn't nearly as pleasant as it looks. Well, say, if you, if you don't like it, why don't you give it up? Well, one drifts for a lack of a reason to do anything else. Well, uh, what do you want? What do you suppose any lone woman wants? <laughs> I guess I've been talking too much again. I'm sorry, Mrs. <laughs> Cordwright. <laughs> Look around, your friend. Piccadilly, London. Sam, please. You know, I, I just can't get over it. Smell it. Sooty. That's the coal smoke. Listen to it, friend. You know, New York may be noisier, but this is deeper. Sam, don't act like a tourist. Come on. Well, here we are. Come in, Major Lockett. Thanks. Oh, it was a grand evening, wasn't it? Was for me. Oh, Sam. Sam, dear. I guess he's not home yet. Sit down, Clyde. It's rather late. Oh, please, Clyde. He's gone off to a stag dinner. Won't be home for hours yet. You can keep me company. I see. He isn't likely to come in roaring, you see, and shoot me when he finds me here. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam has all the old-fashioned virtues except jealousy. Call it a virtue, do you? Well, when a wife who isn't uh, exactly plain and seems to be attractive to other men and doesn't mind when they show her that they are attractive. Oh, quite. Yes, I see what you mean. Clyde, you're not being as amusing as usual tonight. I don't feel amusing. Be informing, then. Tell me the story of your life. I'd rather hold your hand. You don't mind? You, uh, you do it so beautifully uh, that I rather like it. Fran, do me a favor. What? Don't go trekking over to the continent. You belong here, Fran. I need you here. You don't mean that. And I don't want you to mean it. Fran, darling. Clyde, please, please. There. Does that show you that I mean it? That was a very silly thing to do, Clyde. Fran. And I didn't like it. I think you'd better go. Trying to make me feel that you resented my kissing you. Did you think I wouldn't resent it? Sorry, I thought I was doing that was what was expected of me. I thought civilized people knew where an innocent flirtation stopped. Will you go, please? Of course. Fran, you're the most charming and childish misconception of yourself. You think you're a woman of the world. You're nothing of the sort, and I'm afraid you never will be. Oh, hello. Oh, hello there, Douglas. You folks just get in? Yes. Now, how was the show? All right, if you like entertainment that ends badly. Good night. Good night. You know, uh, he's not so bad. He's fresh, but he's not so bad. <laughs> my friend, darling, what's the matter? What is it? I've never been so furious in my life. What, Lockhart? Don't mention that rotter's name. What did he do? He insulted me. Yeah, how far did he go? <laughs> when I tried to put him in his place, he said things to me. He said things that... I can't bear it. Well, I suppose it's up to me to go out and shoot him. Don't joke, Sam. Well, I would feel rather like a fool. You know, you and I aren't up to this sort of thing. It uh, kind of makes us look like the hicks we are. Sam. Well, it does, and it's your own fault for leading him on. So I'm to blame. Well, you must have given him some excuse for making a pass. You, uh, 
You have been flirting with him, and you've got such a sweet way of bawling me out in front of him that he naturally concludes... I've never said anything to embarrass you. I'm always loyal to you. Oh, you'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. And I'm tired. I'm tired, too. All right, then. We're both tired. Oh, Sam. Yeah? What is it now? We never used to scrap so much at home. I guess we haven't got enough else to do over here. Don't say that. It's England. England's such a strain. I want to go over to France tomorrow, Sam. I don't. I like it here. I don't. Now, I'm just beginning to get on to things in London. I've got a date to look at some aeroplane factories I don't care if you have. I know, but France will be so foreign. I want it to be. I want to start all over. I'm ashamed of this lock of business. And I can't stay in this country with that man laughing at me and saying that I... What, did you uh, kick him out? Now, you've got to take me away. I don't trust myself. I'm afraid of myself. Afraid, sweetheart? Yes, I am. I'm just a woolly American like you, after all. If you ever catch me trying to be anything else, will you beat me? Well, will I have to beat you very long at a time? Oh, darling. The Lux Radio Theater continues with Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland in Dodsworth in just a moment. Before we go on, however, let's look in on a Hollywood tea party. It's a kitchen shower for one of the girls over at RKO who's getting married the end of the week. Oh, I'm the luckiest bride that ever was to get all these dandy presents. Oh, this is just the beginning, Grace. Well, here's another from Emily. And I bet I know what it is. And I bet I do, too. It's a flower, sister. She's written a poem. It's because of your biscuits, your husband starts sifting. It's no fault of the flour if it gets a good sifting. <laughs> oh, that be well. Oh, here's something from Dorothy. What do you suppose it is? That's written a poem, too. Perhaps that will tell. First a tip from me to you. Hands shouldn't show the work they do. So here's my gift. Lux Flakes, my friend. The beauty care that protects my hands. <laughs> my God, I always thought you gave your hands some expensive beauty treatments. Oh, not much. Why should I bother with beauty treatments when I use Lux for dishes? Well, most people seem to get red, rough-looking hands from dishwashing. Well, you won't have to worry about that. With Lux flakes around the house, you can keep your hands as soft and nice. Why, you can look like you never did a lick of work in your life. Well, I guess I'll be using your gift every day, Doc. I'm glad you started me off with a big box. Oh, I always get the large size. It's more economical, really. Come on, read this next one. An ode on what's owed to the butcher. Mr. DeMille presents the next scene of Dodgeworth. We continue with Dodgeworth, starring Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland, with Barbara O'Neill, Pedro de Cordova, and Barbara Kent. <laughs> One month has passed, and the Dodsworths are in Paris. We're in their hotel suite, where they've been entertaining some of their newfound friends. On the balcony, high above the city, we find Fran Dodsworth with Arnold Israel, a suavely polished citizen of the world. And what can I do to make myself a part of your Paris, Mrs. Dodsworth? Come to dine with us again, Arnold. Oh, no. You and your husband must come to us now. Tuesday at 8. Cape Voltaire, uh, through the carousel and uh, straight over the river. Oh, what a charming address. Where do you call your home, Arnold? Uh, I was born in Krakow. I grew up here. I keep my residence in New York, a flat in London, and a villa at Antibes. Oh, well, what an ideal existence. I believe in freedom and uh, variety. So do I. <laughs> that should cement our friendship. Oh. <laughs> uh, Madame de Penab tells me that You and she are taking a villa on Lake Geneva for the summer. Uh, Well, uh, it hasn't been settled. Uh, Then uh, you will not return to America with your husband in uh, June? Uh, That uh, hasn't been settled either. Uh, I uh, expect to be at Geneva in uh, August. Perhaps I Oh, you must come to see us. I mean, if we're there. Oh, I should be delighted. Really delighted. Is it Douglas? Oh, yes. Mrs. Cartwright? Everyone seems to be going. I must say good night. Uh, and so must I. It's been a charming evening, Mrs. Dodsworth. I've been happy to celebrate your birthday with you. Oh, I hadn't realized it was your birthday, Mrs. Dodsworth. I wish I hadn't. 
No woman enjoys getting to be 35. When you're 40, as I am, you look back on 35 as the most agreeable age. I hope I look as young as you do, Mrs. Courtright, when I'm 40. You're almost sure to, my dear. Uh, well, uh, I, uh, I must get my coat. My dear, don't. What? You're so charming. Be sure you're right. I don't know what you're talking about. Shall we go in? Well, then, then I went in where Napoleon was crowned, and I sat down, and there I was. Napoleon and Sam Dodd were the zenith together. <laughs> it was a big kick, I tell you. Oh, hello, friend. Mr. Dodsworth has been giving us his impression of Paris. Oh, yes? The manufacturer of automobiles uh, comes into contact with Gothic permanence and finds it now overpowering. Right. That's exactly what I like about sightseeing. It shows you how small you are in time as well as space. Of course, Fran says it isn't a thing to do, but uh, I like it. What do you say, Kurt? Paris? <laughs> I detest it. For me, it is a motion picture made by lunatics. Well, I have listened while an American automobile magnate, an Austrian travel agent... And an international banker have explained Paris to me, a Parisian. <laughs> eh bien, now I go home. Good night, my dearest friend. Good night, Madame de Penaube. Good night, Court, dear. Thanks for my sweet flowers. Call me up tomorrow. We might dance somewhere for tea. Good night. Good night, Kirk. Good night, Arnold. Good night. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night. <laughs> Good night Mr. Dodsworth. Oh, are you going too, Mrs. Courtright? I must. But I stole a bit of your paper to write my Italian address on. Here it is. Come and see me. Say, we'd love to. Please do. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Courtright. You like that woman, don't you? Well, you thought she was the most distinguished-looking woman on the boat. She seems a front in Paris. Oh, you know, I'm always glad to entertain any of your friends, Sam, even the not particularly amusing ones. Oh, I think I'll go to bed. Coming? Yes. Say, friend. Yes? Haven't we had about enough of Paris? My dear Sam, unfasten the shoulder strap. Will you, mon vieux? Mm, no, I mean, isn't it about time we began thinking about going home? Home? No. I want to see lots more of Europe. Well, so do I, but we could get in a couple of months of the Mediterranean and Germany and still catch a June sailing. And I want to see Venice and Rome and get a stein of real German beer before I'm through. Planning your tourist vacation, are you? Well, I don't see much percentage just sitting here on my rear end. <laughs> no, I've got some business I want to attend to. I'd like to see Emily. We haven't seen her since the honeymoon. I'd like to be in New Haven for my class reunion. Sam. Yeah? Why don't you go home? What, without you? Yes. Get yourself a new lease on life, and then come back and join me. Why don't you? No, I wouldn't want to go home without you, friend. Well, I can see you aren't enjoying Paris. I'm only thinking of your pleasure. If you thought of mine, you wouldn't ask me to leave here just when we're getting to know some really nice people. Well, I don't think they're so nice. We needn't go into that again. Well, I don't, and I don't see what you see in them. Now, this Arnold Israel may be all he says he is internationally and financially, but he, he certainly is no Barney Baruch. Sam... Mrs. Panabo, well, she may be all right, but I hate to think who pays the bill when that young Austrian Kurt takes you out. Arnold Israel happens to be one of the most distinguished living financiers. Yeah. And <laughs> Rene, and it is Madame de Panabo, not Mrs. Panabo, yeah. is a true woman of the great world here. Mm -hmm. Kurt may be poor, but he holds one of the oldest titles in Austria, and they all belong to the most amusing and exclusive crowd in Paris. Fran, do you think the real thing in Paris would hang out with a couple of hicks like us? Hicks. All right, now what else are we? I'm just an ordinary American businessman, and I married the daughter of a zenith brewer who's flying pretty high these days. I suppose you know what you mean by that. Well, why won't you sit at a sidewalk cafe with me? Because smart people don't. I'm not smart. I am. Then you ought to be smart enough not to care what people think. Now let's have the one about the great motor magnet and all he's done for the automobile industry. You may be the most impressive man in zenith, but you're not in zenith now. You're in Paris. And I'm sick and tired of apologizing to my Have you been for apologizing way... to this yes, crowd for I me? I have. Well? Yeah? Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Well, we've been making so much noise, someone's complained. How humiliating. Yes, isn't it? All right, go ahead. Pipe down, but go ahead. I'm waiting. You're hopeless. 
If you had the mistiest notion of civilization here. Yeah, well, maybe I don't think so much of it, though. Maybe clean hospitals, concrete highways, and no soldiers along the Canadian border come near my idea of civilization. There are 20 million automobiles in America. I've contributed something to every one of them for my own personal civilization. And if that isn't more than knowing how to order dinner as your friend the madam... Don't call her the madam, All either. right, all right, all right. Let's not go into that again. I'm going to get out of this town and back to doing something and take you along. Uh, Sam, I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. I think we need a vacation from each other. Well, I don't feel that way about it. I've taken a villa with René de Penard in Switzerland. Well, I... I think you might have told me. I've got my own money. Fran. What? Fran, my darling, you... You're not drifting away from me. I hope not. Well, you and I, Fran, after 20 years? All right, I, I'll give it up. I won't go home. You've got to go. I can't stand being torn this way any longer. I'm suffocating. Fran. I'm sorry for everything mean I've said, but if we're going on together, I've got to be left alone this summer. Now, don't look so hurt, and please don't be angry. Or do be angry if it'll make you feel any happier. But remember that I did make a real home for you, and I'll do it again. But you've got to let me have my fling now. Because you're simply rushing at old age, Sam. And I'm not ready for old age yet. What are you looking at? Shipping news. I just thought I'd see the first boat I could catch. Look at this. Sam Dodsworth's home. Sam Dodsworth's home. He said he had a class reunion. Sam Dodsworth and she's not with him. Hmm. Why should I say anything I didn't think? You didn't think what would make me think. Well, maybe I don't care what you think. Well, you'd better care what I think. Mm. Hello, Dad. Hello, Tubby. Mady's here. We've been waiting for you. Sam, Tubby. Was it fun in New Haven? Did you have a good time? Had a wonderful time. Terrible. Oh, what is this? A heat wave or just a hangover? It's Sam. Sam, yes, yeah, Sam. I'm going home. Well, go ahead. Tubby, sit down. I'm going home. Tubby. Is anything wrong, Dad? No. Has a cable come for me today? Not yet. Why, there should have been a cable from your mother. I can telephone them. No, 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 don't bother. The cable would have come, they'd have sent it out, wouldn't they? Don't be cross, Father. I'm not being cross. I only asked if there'd been a cable. In the old days, I wouldn't have to ask. Been laid out on my table for me. The way things are run around this house, I can't find anything of mine. I know things aren't the same, Father, but please don't be difficult. Well, can you blame a man for being difficult when his own family makes him feel more homeless in his own home than he did in Paris? I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, it's a fact. I'm not being difficult. Where's my mail? There isn't any. No mail? My mail should be laid out on this table. But, Father, if there isn't any mail to lay out... Your mother always had my mail laid out. No cable, no mail. Is that the trouble, Sam? What? No cable and no mail. No. Have a cigar, Tubby? Anything, Sam? Anything? All right, where are the cigars? Why, uh, why, Harry smokes cigarettes. I'll order some. Ah, oh, don't bother. It never would have been like this in your mother's day. <laughs> no mail, no cigars, no cable. Father, I'm sorry things aren't the, the... Father, I'm sorry things aren't the way they used to be. But Harry and I are living here now. And I wish you'd stop speaking of mother as though she were dead. I'm not speaking of your mother as though she... Oh, were... yes, you are, Sam. You are. Well, Fran's coming home. Is she? Dad. Yeah, she's coming any time now. I wrote her over a week ago and told her to come back. Just waiting for a cable to tell me the boat. Oh, dear me, Mr. Dodsworth. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Well, here's a cable for you. It came this afternoon, but yeah, I... Yeah, let me see it. Thank heaven. Maybe we'll get a little peace and quiet around here now, Emily. What's the matter, Sam? Isn't Mother coming? This isn't from your mother. It's nothing. Go outside, Tubby. Huh? Go out. Oh, sure. Come on, Tubby. Yeah. So long for a while, you old horse thief. Sam, what is it? She's not coming, maybe. I guessed as much. What does she say? Want a few more months, Europe. Hope you're having good time home. Not one word about me going over. No, she's thoughtless. No, she's not, matey. She's scared. Scared? Of what? Of growing old. Sam, those people she's with, the ones she mentioned in her last letter, do you know them? Yeah, sure. 
like them? Oh, they're all right. Who's uh, Arnold Israel? Israel? Oh, he's one of those custom-built internationals you see in the road of graveyard section every Sunday. Oh. Well, give us a kiss now. Say, will you lay off those European liberties with my wife? Oh, come on, Tubby. Uh, telegraph office, please. Hello? This is Samuel Dodsworth speaking. Take a cable going to Mrs. Dodsworth. Same address as my last. Ready? Sailing, Aquitania, Wednesday. Meet me, Ritz, Paris. Love. Signed, Sam. And take another. Going to A.B. Heard Agency, London. Sailing, Aquitania, Wednesday. Stop. Using utmost discretion, ascertain day-to-day address of Arnold Israel, Paris. Keep me informed, wireless. Signed, Dodsworth. Uh, Send them both straight. Yes, repeat them, will you? Fran, this looks natural. The street was as cool as anything in Paris, so I took it again. You must be tired from your trip. How long is it from here to Lake Geneva? Oh, uh, I've come further than that. I've come from uh, Biarritz. Oh, Biarritz, huh? Yes. I was alone, of course. What are you looking at, Sam? Did I remember to write you that I adore you? Oh, I know. I, I don't believe you did. Do you? You keep looking at your watch. I'm expecting a caller. This time of night? Who? At Sherberg, I sent a man a telegram to meet me here. He's late. I'll give him ten minutes more. You're very mysterious. I've never seen you like this before. No? I've never seen you like this either, Fran. Well, if we've got to stay here in this stifling room, how is Emily? Very happy. She's going to have... Uh... Oh, wait a minute, I'll answer it. I'll wait in the bedroom. No, I'd rather you stay. Sit steady. Sit down, darling. Come in. Arnold. Good evening. Uh, Fran, I... I tried to reach you on the telephone to let you know I was coming. And you came from Beritz, too, didn't you? I wanted to see you two face to face. Now, I know the whole story. I never heard anything so outrageous in my life. Suppose Arnold was in Switzerland. What if he was in Beritz? Do you know how insulting you are? You don't know how insulting I'm going to be if you don't quit this play acting. Play acting. Now, I know where you've been, and I know who you've been with. What I want to know is, are you coming home with me as my wife or staying here in Europe? Sam. Uh, You wouldn't put matters so bluntly if you understood, Dodsworth. I understand. I'm sure that you and Kurt and Madame de Penable have given her things she wanted and never got from me. But I'm interested in what I need and want. And that happens to be peace of mind. But if you bring yourself to see matters reasonably... (laughs) I've you... crossed the Atlantic Ocean to be reasonable. Fran, I've loved you and been married to you for 20 years. I'd like to hang on to you if I can. You want to marry each other? Well? But my dear man. No, we don't. You want to divorce me, then? I can tell you, she does not. Is that true, Fran? Why should I want to divorce you? You're my husband, mm. aren't you? Couldn't very well divorce me if I weren't. <clears throat> oh, You can laugh. Yes, I can do worse than that. Uh, This much having been cleared up, uh, what have you to suggest? That Fran and I try and forget what's happened. Start out on a long hike tomorrow, the Tyrrell, Italy, any place, and sail back home in October. Oh, no, Sam. No, not just yet. And you'll have to divorce me or I'll divorce you. Sam. I told you where I stand. You're trying to take my youth away from me and tie me down to being an old man's wife. You've got your choice. You're trying to take my happiness away from me, the only romantic happiness I've ever known. Oh, Fran, please, uh, that was unnecessary. Listen, I didn't call you in here to defend me. It's too ridiculous. It is ridiculous, Certainly it's ridiculous. I knew we'd all end by looking like fools. I'll go now, if you'll excuse me. Sure, I'll excuse you. I hope you achieve your uh, peace of mind. Good night. Good night. Now, Fran, I'm going to see this thing through, if it can be done. I'm ready to wipe the slate clean, if you are. 
When do we start? Where do we go? Anywhere you like, till we go back home in October. Zenith in October. Oh, you'll be wanting to go home. Emily's having a baby in October. Emily? A baby? She didn't tell me. No, she left that to me. How is she? Is she well? Oh, yeah, she's fine. I must send her a cable. Think of Emily having a baby. So you see, uh, we've got to behave ourselves because we'll be a couple of old grandparents in October. Grandparents. Station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Godsworth with Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland is resumed shortly. Tonight's glimpse of backstage Hollywood focuses on costumes. At 20th Century Fox Studios, they're making a film called Alibaba Goes to Town. In it, Eddie Cantor, the star, wears a red turban. Before that turban was made, more than 50 shades of red silk were photographed. Yet when you see the picture, you won't be able to tell if the turban is red, green, or blue. You may wonder why the studio went to all this bother, and why the clothes bill on a million-dollar production will often exceed $100,000. Answering your questions is the only man connected with a major studio who not only supervises the making of costumes, but is responsible also for creating the styles from which they're fashioned. At present, he's working on 14 major productions. The head stylist and wardrobe manager of 20th Century Fox, Arthur M. Levy. Thanks, Mr. DeMille. We want to all that trouble on Eddie Cannon's turban because if we didn't get the right color, you would see on the screen an ugly shade of gray. That's how revealing a modern picture camera is. Our costumes must pass screen tests before they are used in a picture. Only after they've been tested on the star and shown in the projection room are we satisfied that fit and color combinations are correct. I recently found a man who does nothing but wrap turbans for the movie. He's Bhagwan Singh, a Hindu, who makes a good living wrapping turbans according to the social or religious position of the wearer. Yes, Bhagwan saved the wardrobe department time and embarrassment on such pictures as Wee Willie Winky and Lives of a Bengal Answer. Other time savers are the dummies in our fitting rooms that are made to the exact proportions of individual players. The dimensions are changed from time to time as the star loses or gains in weight, and the first fittings are made on them. But our biggest worry is keeping abreast of production, avoiding delays that might hold up the actual shooting of a picture. One of our ways of overcoming this is to have a staff of cleaners and laundry people working every night, getting today's wardrobe in shape for its use again tomorrow. Because of the terrific speed at which we work, we've become one of Lux's biggest customers in Hollywood. Lux Flakes clean not only well, but fast. We can depend on them to have things ready and up to our exacting requirements in a minimum of time. And Lux is perfectly safe for even the finest washable materials. We must use the best materials not only for appearance's sake, but because of the months of hard use they get during production. And we've provided against emergencies in the Buccaneer by having duplicates made of every important costume in case they should be torn or damaged. We do that, too. Our film in old Chicago has a scene in which Tyrant Power runs through the city streets during the historic fire. He falls down, rips his clothing, is splashed with mud and drenched in water. This scene was shot four times, and each time Tyron had to start off fresh and untorn. We were prepared by having six duplicates of his entire wardrobe ready. The research work on that picture was very interesting. For example, the question arose as to what kind of a shield was worn by a Chicago policeman in 1854. Going to Chicago and checking the city files, we found the shield was made of copper. We also found out that it was from those copper shields that the slang term cop originated. Before you leave... Tell us what we'll all be wearing next season. Well, since most of the style news we hear is all about women's clothes, here's a little advanced news for the men. Probably as a result of the Duke of Windsor's visit to the Austrian mountains, the Tyrol influence is a smart note on the screen and on the street. Suits and overcoats will be rough and homespun. You'll see plenty of color. There'll be reverse calf shoes, heavily stitched and with square toes. Felt hats will have heavy cords and large feathers. And gloves, sweaters, socks, and scarves will feature the Tyrolean hand-knitted peasant pattern. But don't worry, gentlemen. Your wives will probably pick out your clothes anyway. <laughs> Good night, Mr.
<laughs> Once again, Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland in the Sinclair Lewis drama, Dodsworth. October. And Fran Dodsworth and Sam are still in Europe. It's early evening as we find them standing at the window of their hotel room in Berlin, gazing into the faintly luminous darkness. Fran breaks a long silence. I love Berlin, don't you, Sammy? I love you, Fran. Oh, Sam, darling. Will you let me thank you for all the lovely places you've taken me? I'm so heedless and silly that I don't speak of it as often as I should. But I'm terribly grateful inside of me, Sam, darling. Have I won you back for my wife, Fran? Yes, Sam. By not being a tartar husband. By letting me have fun with that nice little court and not thinking I'm a hussy. By helping me to forget Arnold Israel. Sam, haven't you anything to say to me? Well, what is it to say? Well, after I've just opened my heart to you, it's a little embarrassing for you to stand there and say nothing. It makes me feel self-conscious. Self-conscious? I guess that's my trouble, Fran. I've lost my bearings. I don't know where we're heading. Oh, I think I'll call up Emily and hear how the baby got through his first day. But there isn't time. Uh, Kurt's coming to take us out to dinner, and you're not even dressed. Well, Kurt can wait. It isn't polite. And Sam, I know how thrilled you are over Emily's baby, but you mustn't tell Kurt. Well, why not? Because he thinks of me as young, and I am. I am. Fran! Come in. Hello. Hello, Kurt. Well, is that wife of yours ready for us, Sam? I take you to a new restaurant for dinner. A very gay restaurant where only the smartest Berliners know to go. And dance after? You can make Sam get dressed. Well, I'm sorry I didn't feel like getting dressed. Now, I guess I'll let you two go along without me. Oh, no, Sam. You must come with us. What fun do you think it is for me to sit up all night watching you two dance? Oh, do not speak so crossly, Sam. You should be happy to see Fern happy. Oh, I didn't mean to snap. Oh, I just got some rather important news from home. News? Sam. Oh, no, nothing that would interest you, Kurt. I'd like to sit by myself and think it over. Perhaps uh, Sam does want to be left alone tonight. But I want to go out. I want to. All right, go ahead, Kurt. You and Fran run along. I'll be all right. Come in, Court. I can't go to bed tonight. I've been having too much fun. I do not like coming in here so late. I do not think Sam would like it. Sam's dead to the world. Don't talk loud, that's all. But, Fran, dear... Please, Court. Let poor little Fran have her fun while she can. There isn't much time left. Oh, darling. Darling, Fran. Court. You know I love you, Fran. You know that. Have you not been happy with me here in Berlin? Oh, yes, I've been terribly happy. I've loved it, Court. You know I have. I think you could love me, Fran. I think you could. But there's no good talking about that. There's nothing we can do about it, is there? No. You are married to Sam. I can't ask you to be my wife. Court, you want to marry me? Does that surprise you? Oh, Fran, why are you not free? If I were free, could... Oh, my darling. Don't. Please don't. Forgive me. I'm not angry. Oh, my dear. Will you not say a, a more kind word, Fran? Some other time. Will you let me kiss you goodnight? Oh, good. Good night, good. If I were free. Sam. Oh, hello, Fran. I, I didn't know you'd come in. I, uh, I didn't know you were awake. I'm sorry Pretty if late. I... Pretty uh... late. Not that I mind. No? Well? Wait, Fran. I've been looking at the sailings. How about it, Fran? Let's get out of this. Sam, please. Why are you always so anxious to go home? I'm sick of it. I'm taking no more chances on another Arnold Israel. Now, I know this friendship for Kurt is harmless enough, but you might get fascinated. You think I might? You really think I might? 
Well, I love Court, and he loves me, and I'm going to marry him. I've decided it only just now, this minute, since I found that you were listening at the door. The great Dodsworth, great prowling elephant. Man. I'm sorry Court didn't stay to punch your head for spying I in on us. I wasn't spying. I didn't You've hear never anything. known anything about me. Not what I had on, nor what I thought, nor the sacrifices Look I made. Look out now. I'll be happy with Court. I'm fighting for life. You can't drag me back. Friend! All right. Can you get your divorce here? What? Your divorce? Oh. Yes, I think so. We should wait a few months. Why? Well, I'd like you to feel absolutely sure about Kurt. It's my funeral now, isn't it? Yes, I guess so. I'll have to get used to that idea. I guess I can. American Express office, Naples branch. Yes, senor. Have it, attend to it. Hello? Any mail for Dodsworth? Oh, hello. No, not a thing today, Mr. Dodsworth. Well, I guess I'll have to wait a few days. Maybe I'll get a pleasant surprise. What have you got in the line of excursions today? Well, we have a tourist party just starting for Herculaneum and Pompeii. No, I've been there. Oh, I see. Well, there's a drive around to Malfi and Sorrento. Been there, too. Would you like Pistum, sir? What's Pistum? Greek temple, sir. In excellent preservation. Well, that's more than I am. All right, I'll take a chance. Get me a car. How many in the party, sir? One. Yes, sir. Mr. Dodsworth. Hmm? Do you remember me? Mrs. Courtright. Well, well, isn't this great? Oh, sit down if you've got a moment. Well, time is something. I've got nothing else but. Uh, and how is Mrs. Dodsworth? She's fine, thanks. I, I haven't got her along with me this trip. Oh, she doesn't like traveling? Does anybody? Well, I don't know. I suspect that most people travel to get away from themselves. Well, I've been at it two months now. I'm glad to hear why. Alone? No, I'm getting used to it now. Well, I don't want to intrude or be impertinent, but... Well, I, I'm sorry. Well, I guess it's a pretty ordinary story. My wife's younger than I am and livelier. I happen to be undressing in public like this. I never did that before. Will you keep on traveling now? Yes, I've got to stay over and be on hand for the divorce. Where? Berlin. I see. Could you let yourself enjoy life for a while? <laughs> Show me how. I wonder if you could. Well, none of this that's happened to me was my idea. Well, then, why don't you break away from your hotel? Forget about Berlin and move out to me. Out to you? It's out where I live at Posilippo. Oh, it may be straining our slight acquaintance, and I can't make you as comfortable as your hotel does. When you want a bath, you'll have to choose between the tin tub and the Mediterranean. But if you like swimming and fishing and a willing listener... Yeah, that's awfully kind of you, Mrs. Courtright, and mighty friendly, but well, I, I don't see how I could. Why not? Well, what did your neighbors say? Well, they'd say any number of things. Exactly. But that doesn't mean they'd be right. They won't be. Oh, come along. We can bolster each other up. And I'm certain you need a little peace of mind. <laughs> Who was that, Teresa? Oh, someone she called. I'm not here, so goodbye. <laughs> Hello there. Hello, Sam. You been out fishing with Pietro again? Yeah, I'm going to try out this new fishing tackle later. I want to show him a few Florida tricks I know. Listen, there's one of those horrible putt-putt motors. Yeah, Pietro and I put it in the boat this morning. What? In that beautiful little sailboat? Sure, Pietro's crazy about it. And you just watch that boat beat the rest of the fishing ground. Oh, Sam, you're hopeless. Ha-ha, <laughs> don't be hard on me, Edith. Setting up that motor's the first real fun I've had since I quit business, and it's got me raring to go all over again for the first time. To go? <laughs> you mean away from here? Any place where I can get back in harness. Think I'll try aviation this time. The idea of a Moscow to Seattle airline kind of strikes me. Moscow to Seattle? Yeah, might be the first man with his own round-the-world system. Say, I know what we'll do. We'll make a little preliminary survey. Where's that map? I'll buy my own plane, and the day after the divorce comes in, we'll both go on a trip 
We, Sam? Are you going to take me with sure. you? Sure, look, look, Siberia. Branch line from Irkutsk to Tashkent or Samarkand. Tough going for you, though, on one little suitcase. Sam, I'll go through life with you on one suitcase if you'll give me the chance. Edith, I've spent one short month with you in this house, and I can't imagine ever living without you again. Couldn't live without you, Sam. Bellino. Bellino. All right, give me. Hello? Hello? Yes, Fran, yes, this is Sam. Oh. oh I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, what? When are you sailing? Well, I guess I'll have to. No, 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 that's all right. Very well. Get the tickets. Goodbye. Well, Kurt has chucked her over. She's dropping the divorce. Going home on the Ultima day after tomorrow. I've got to go with her. I won't let you. Well, what else can I, I do? I won't see you killed by her selfishness. I love you and she doesn't. You're content with me. You're miserable with I her. I know, Edith. I know. You were a young man a minute ago. You've shriveled at the sound of her voice. It's everything's starting up all over again. I've seen you shrivel the same way. Every letter you've got from her. I can't think. You're all wrong to go back. She needs me. So do I. Oh, but that isn't all. Think of the Moscow and Seattle line. I know, Edith. I know every bit of it. You've just got to be patient with what me. What is this hold she's got over you? I've got to take care of her. Man's habits get pretty strong in 20 years. I'll go pack now. I'll send Teresa to help you. Oh, Sam. Edith. She's giving you up. That's the hell of it. Five minutes. Do it. Bring me a brandy and soda. Yes, sir. You might have asked me if I want anything, Sam. Do your friend? No. But if I've got to sit here in this ice box they call a bar, you've got to shut that door. Very well. It's a cold morning and I'm not dressed for draft. I didn't expect to have to sit practically out of doors in the middle of winter. All right, go on. You were saying, friend. What? Oh, yes. You were so right about court, Sammy, dear. I can't think how you guessed it, because you aren't usually so awfully good at judging character. His family may be as old as the Colosseum, but when I saw his mother, <laughs> my dear, what a frump. Don't. What's the matter with you? Don't ride Kurt and his mother that way, that's all. I'm sorry. I'll be good. Well, I should have expected you to defend them. No, I suppose not. Well, I know how you always let bygones be bygones. It's such a wonderfully happy ending to all our wild little escapa escapades, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? Sam. Will you look at that hat that woman has on? And will you regard her shoes? <gasps> oh, but wait until you see some of the clothes I've got. I'll show Zenith something. Maybe it will wake up a little. You seem rather distray, Sam. Yeah, do I? Well, maybe I don't like your riding Zenith that way either. Hmm, I don't seem to be able to strike a congenial note. I do think you might meet me halfway. As I look back, though, I don't blame myself. I can't, really. You were a goodie at fault, too. There are sins of omission, Sammy, dear. Stuart. Yes, sir? Take this check. Go to Suite 7 on B-Deck, get the suitcase with this number on it, and bring it here. Yes, sir. What's the idea, Sam? I'm not sailing with you. You're not sailing? No, I'm not. No, Sam. you're trying to put it tactfully. Sam. We just can't make a go of things any longer. You haven't learned a thing, not a single thing out of all our sorrows. And I've been flattering myself that you really wanted to come back to me. I tried, didn't I? But I'm through, finished, and that's flat. What's going to become of me? I don't know. You'll have to stop getting younger someday. Sorry, goodbye. Are you going back to that washed-out expatriate in Naples? Yes, and when I get my divorce, I'm going to marry her. And she and I are going on doing things. Do you think you'll ever get me out of your blood? I don't know. Maybe not. But love has got to stop someplace. Short of Stuart. Sam! Sam, come back here! Sam! Sam! Edith! Edith, where are you? Edith, I'm here! It's me, Sam! It's Sam! Sam, you're back! Yes, you bet I'm back! Oh, Sam, what happened? Nothing! Everything! Did you miss the boat? Yes, and I'm going on missing it! 
I'm going to spend the rest of my life just missing boats. Oh, darling, <laughs> you're going to stay. Uh, you're here to stay. Yeah, you just try and get rid of me. So ends the last chapter of Dodsworth. I know you want to hear from Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland, and they'll take that curtain call in a moment. First, a word from Melville Ruick. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Before Mr. DeMille introduces our stars, may I leave this thought with the ladies. These days, you're probably getting some new clothes for fall and winter, and some new stockings in subtle shades to blend with the new colors. Naturally, you want those stockings to look just as nice each time you wear them as they do right now. That is where Lux comes in. Lux flakes are especially made to protect your stockings. They save the elasticity, you know, cut down on runs. So why not ensure the subtle flattery of those new stockings with Lux? Our producer, Mr. DeMille. For eight years, Walter Houston and Nan Sunderland have always appeared together. So tonight's performance had an added distinction in that it was their last co-starring vehicle, at least for a while. That's true, C.B., but in case Walter Winchell is listening in... Let me add that everything is all right. <laughs> In fact, everything was never better. Here's what's happening. First, Walter has a picture to do at MGM. Benefits forgot. The story of the time of Abraham Lincoln. Are you playing Lincoln again, Walter? No, I guess I'm one of those very few actors having once played Lincoln were able to get away from the role. This time, I'm a circuit rider, a preacher. While I'm making the picture, Nan goes to New York for her play. Which is also historical. It is Sidney Harmon's production of Robin Landing and goes all the way back to 1785. Well, man, good luck. Mm. <laughs> Around Christmas time, I expect to open on Broadway and Mr. Tut. You know Mr. Tut, C.B.? He's that long-haired lawyer and fisherman that Arthur Train writes about. You see, I'm getting in training already. How do you like the hair? Well, I was about to suggest that a nice uh, permanent wouldn't hurt at all. <laughs> so have a lot of people. Even our brand-new docks home, Frawley, and box at me now. <laughs> but it's strictly for art's sake. Well, long hair or short, come back to us again, Walter, as soon as your play's through. And you, Nan, just remember that the latch string will be out and the footlights will be on for you in the Lux Radio Theater always. Thank you very much, C.B. Whether we're with you as performers or listeners, there are few things that give us more genuine pleasure than this program. Yeah, and we really mean that. Yes. Now, good luck to you all and good night. Good night, Walter. Each Monday night, the Lux Radio Theater presents the human scene in one of its more dramatic phases. And while rash promises are best avoided, I believe we can safely say that our production next Monday night will bring you one of your most enjoyable hours. Our play, The Unforgettable Stella Dallas, which Samuel Goldwyn has so recently presented to America. And what is especially good news, we'll have the same magnificent stars as the picture. Barbara Stanwyck, John Bowles, and Anne Shirley. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Stella Dallas with Barbara Stanwyck, John Bowles, and Anne Shirley. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is your announcer, ladies and gentlemen, Melville Roy. In tonight's cast were Harlan Briggs as Tubby, Martha Wentworth as Madame de Penab, Hugh Huntley as Lockhart, Frank Nelson as Court. Gretchen Thomas as Matey, Lou Merrill as travel agent, Margaret Brayton as woman, and James Eagles as page boy. Mr. DeMille appeared through courtesy of Paramount Pictures and Louis Silver's 20th Century Fox Studios, where he was in charge of music for the new film, Life Begins in College. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm-hmm.